We are trying to understand how ocean acidification affects life in the oceans. So ocean acidification is this um, phenomenon caused by the uh, increase in carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. So as, car calcium, um, sorry, as carbon dioxide levels increase in the atmosphere, because that's in equilibrium with the CO2 in, in, in the oceans, um, as it enters the oceans, if you like, it combines with water and it forms carbonic acid, which is a weak acid, and it makes the oceans more acidic. The chemical changes as a result of ocean acidification um, has been a concern for organisms, animals and plants that make these shells or plates of calcium carbonate. So if you imagine these microscopic plants called coccolithophores at the surface of the ocean, they make these plates of uh, chalky material, they accumulate them on the, on the, sh on the, on the cells, and as they divide, the, the shells uh, fall, shed from, from these cells, and they form, um, as they divide, they, they, they make this huge, what we call blooms, so these this enormous populations that cover hundreds of thousands of square kilometers. Um, when they run out of food, they are typically eaten by, by other critters in the ocean, and, and, and this calcium carbonate, this chalky material wrapped in, in, in other material um, after it comes out of the other end of these grazers, um, starts its journey to the bottom of the oceans, to the, to the seafloor. And once it accumulates on the seafloor, it remains there. And that's, that's the, the way the, the oceans lock carbon. So as they consume more and more carbon, the, they drive the equilibrium from the atmosphere to the ocean. So this is, this is a way um, by which the oceans can um, sequester carbon. So we use this um, <coughs> tool called uh, shotgun proteomics. So this is a technique that um, uh, generates a proteome. So if you think about the genomes of organisms, they contain all the information uh, about potential proteins and processes that are required in the cell. What we um, use is the proteome, which is the, the, um, the, the subset of proteins that are expressed in, a, in an organism. So what we did is to look at the proteome under present day CO2 conditions and the proteome under future high CO2 conditions to try and figure out how the organisms respond at the functional level to CO2 stress. I mean, the ecological consequences would be devastating if there is a loss, a major loss of, of calcification. If you think about coral reefs, for example, which are major ecosystems for many types of organisms, that's a very um, that's a, that's a very good example, but also other organisms like uh, coccolithophores that are responsible together with foraminifera and, and a few others, these are responsible for the downward flux of carbon to deep sea sediments. If we slow down that process, the um, capacity of the oceans to act as a, as a carbon reservoir, as a carbon sink, could diminish, and that's, that's also a concern in this sense. We have been looking at one type of um, coccolithophore that appears to respond differently to acidification compared to most coccolithophore um, strains of this species. And this is very interesting because this, this can give us clues about how resilient strains or resilient species may, may um, behave in response to ocean acidification. So the plan um, for the future is to actually explore um, the functional responses of strains that appear to respond in the opposite way and look at what's different um, about them. And the next step is to go to the field and actually test these responses in, in populations.